Thank you for the introduction. Uh, sorry that I can't be there with you today. I really wish I was in Moorhead talking about aerospace in Kentucky, but I am actually in the state of New York talking aerospace in Kentucky. So we've got something in common. Hopefully my talks will lead to more of good statistics coming out of Kentucky and the aerospace industry. But let me go ahead and get started. We're talking about aerospace and mustaches. I know you're going, where is he going with this presentation? Aerospace mustaches, they have nothing in common. Well, I promise you, by the time I'm done, you're gonna understand why I have those two at the beginning of this presentation. You know, I thought about having a, a title for this, why Kentucky is a rock star in aerospace and what does it mean for the future of the Commonwealth? But I thought that's kind of boring and you wouldn't pay attention if I had it something like that. So we're gonna go with aerospace and mustaches. You know, I think when we look at philosophers, I always go for guys with great beards and mustaches. And you know, I found one and he just so happens to be an astronomer. It's Galileo and Galileo says, all truths are easy to understand once they are discovered. But the point is to discover them. So I'm gonna help you discover some things about Kentucky and aerospace that you may not be aware of. But the key thing is I wanna draw some similarities between something else that's totally unrelated to aerospace. So follow me. So as I was thinking about this presentation, I kept thinking about aerospace in Kentucky. What is the connection? And I kept thinking and thinking and thinking and I came to me. It's like mustaches. Aerospace is like mustaches. And you're probably thinking, what does he mean? What in the world could aerospace have to do with mustaches? Well, let me explain. Wyoming, great state. It's one of my top 50 states. However, when you look at Wyoming, they don't do so well in aerospace. Unlike Kentucky, they're not a leader in the aerospace industry. In fact, last year, they exported only $2.8 million. When you think about that, $2.8 million compared to where Kentucky is, to give you some representation, Kentucky actually exports more in the time it took from your breakfast to your lunch than Wyoming did for the entire year last year. So when you start thinking about that, Wyoming's just not that good at aerospace. And I would say they're not good in a lot of things. One of them could possibly be growing a mustache. Now we also have Mark Harrell in the room. Mark's back there in the back. Mark, why don't you wave to everybody? Mark's back there in the room and, and I wanted to point him out because he's here with Project Lead the Way and he's encouraging our young scholars of Kentucky to think about aerospace education and engineering because all of our aerospace companies need people like that. But Mark has a problem. Mark is one of those folks that can't grow a mustache. He's very similar to Wyoming. Wyoming can't do aerospace. Mark can't grow a mustache. But there is somebody in the room that can grow a mustache. President Wayne Andrews is in the back of the room. And you know what? He's got a rocking mustache there, very similar to mine. And as we look for this, I want you to see the similarities between the mustaches and the not mustaches, the states that do aerospace well and the ones that don't. Washington State. Washington State is the mecca of aerospace in the United States. They are so good that you could add up most of the other states and they still don't equate to what Washington State's doing. They're the rock stars. And then there's Albert Einstein, one of the smartest men in the history of the world, rocking his stash. And Salvador Dali, one of the most creative people, rocking his stash in a way that I've never seen before. But just like those mustaches in Washington State's ability to do aerospace, Kentucky does things right. We are a mustache state because we are one of the leaders in aerospace. We can grow a mustache in this state. What do I mean? Well, let's follow some of my logic as we go through this. How good are we at growing mustaches or aerospace? Well, are we Michael Jordan good? No, I would say that's more Washington State. You, they've got the rings, they've got the championships. Notice he also has a stash, by the way. We're more like Anthony Davis. We're the up and coming future superstar. We're the guy that nobody saw coming. We're the guy that has the talent, the expertise that are taking things to that next level. Anthony Davis, with a mustache from his eyebrow there, that's who Kentucky is. 
Our future is bright, and I'm going to show you how bright. I want to give you some amazing facts about the aerospace industry in Kentucky because most of the people in this room have no idea that we are rock stars. We're rocking our stash in this state, and let me show you how well we're rocking it. By the numbers, we exported over $7 billion of aerospace parts last year. $7 billion, that's with a B. Can you believe that? $7 billion. And when you look at our national rank, we're actually third behind Washington State and California. I'd say that's probably Michael Jordan and Julia Serving for those keeping score with basketball. But we're coming up as Anthony Davis at number three. How good are our aerospace exports? Let's look at the trend. In the early 90s, we were down below a billion dollars, but then something magical started happening in 2003. And as 2003, we saw the, this meteoric rise, and then all of a sudden, the bottom kind of sl uh, fell out, and we dropped a little bit, but now that the economy is back and being strong, you start seeing our aerospace exports taking off like a rocket close to $8 billion last year. Now, to show you how good our growth has been, in 2012, we had almost $4 billion of exports. But when we come back to 2014, we are actually two times what we did in 2012. By approaching $8 billion, we have eclipsed all records in aerospace exports. When we talk about the Kentucky aerospace industry, we talk about these exports, we are a worldwide phenomena. We are sending our products to 91 countries around the world. I think it's sometimes it's easier to say where we're not sending them than where we are sending them. For some reason, Greenland doesn't like our products because you know what? We don't send aerospace there. We don't even send bourbon there. Gosh, we got to do a, a trade mission there or something just to get them to buy something from Kentucky. But when you start looking at the other countries around the world, the only other places that we have some gaps are in Africa and some of the less developed Middle Eastern countries. But the rest of the world understands Kentucky as a rock star and we're rocking that stash in 91 countries. France was our number one export destination with $1.7 billion worth of exports last year. That is a phenomenal growth, and we'll talk about that growth here in just a second. But to think about that, $1.7 billion, that's actually more than what we were sending to all the countries back in the early 2000s. So think about that growth. And when you start thinking about our exports, think France is our leader, but where are our other leaders? The other top markets that we're sending things are the United Kingdom and Brazil and China and Singapore and Japan. Canada, Germany, Hong Kong, the Netherlands. Those are all top markets for Kentucky's aerospace products. When we look at the high growth countries, for the gambling reference here, we've doubled our money in the last year. We had France, who has actually doubled. Remember I talked about the 1.75 billion? They doubled their 2013 numbers, as did Japan, the Netherlands again, Mexico, New Zealand, the rock star of this group, though, is Turkey, and I guarantee they're rocking the Kentucky mustache because they took 4.5 times as many aerospace exports from Kentucky in 2014 as they did in 2013. Morocco is a rock star as well. They went from zero to $1 million last year in Kentucky aerospace exports. When we start talking about some of these other countries, Brazil is where Kentucky is king, though. Last year, we were the number one state taking exports of aerospace products to Brazil. We were the number one state above Washington and California and all the other states combined. So when you start looking at that, we're also top three, which ain't bad, in France, the United Kingdom, China, Hong Kong, with Washington and California beating us in Japan and the Netherlands. Typically, it's Washington State that's beating us in these other countries. So, the question keeps coming about, why is Kentucky so good at aerospace? Does anybody have the answer? Well, I think once again, we need to look to past philosophers and try to figure out what may be the key to Kentucky and our aerospace growth. I look at Marcel Prost, a French novelist, and he says the real voyage of discovery consists in not seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. So let me help you get some new eyes in looking at Kentucky's exports. 
Let's also look at some modern day philosophers to help us figure out how all of this fits together. And in thinking of the modern day philosopher that we need to rely on to help us understand what's happening, I think we need to go with one that, that most of the people in the audience would recognize. And I think that's Jeff Foxworthy. The wisdom of Jeff Foxworthy will help us understand why Kentucky is so darn good at aerospace. And besides, he's rocking a mustache too. Jeff Foxworthy might look at this and say, you might be good at aerospace if your state has good logistics. Well, when you look at Kentucky, we have other states that are jealous of us. Not only are they jealous of our aerospace exports, but they're jealous of our logistics. We have two world air hubs, one in Louisville at UPS, one in Northern Kentucky with DHL. That is two more than most of the states that we are in competing against. We also have 19 interstates and major roads that help get those goods to our world air hubs. We also have 1,100 miles of navigable waterways. Why is that important? Well, it comes into the fact that we need products like steel and aluminum and some of these advanced materials we'll talk about in a little bit. We have to get them via river and Kentucky is blessed by having access to the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. We also have 2,760 miles of railroads. We have the logistics and the infrastructure to get a product anywhere in the world in a day's notice. From Kentucky, you can actually reach 60% of the world's population in one day, or the U.S. population in one day. But did you know that you can also reach any corner of the world through our world ports in the same day? That's why logistics are so important to our aerospace industry. You might be good at aerospace if your state has advanced manufacturing. Kentucky builds some of the most complex items in the world, and we do it well. The Kentucky ingenuity is known through the bourbon industry, but also through our aerospace industry and our automotive. When we look at the products that are being produced here, we see companies like Phoenix Products here. This is their CEO meeting with the CEO of Jackson Energy. He's showing her a product that they make that is exported. It's not glamorous, it's not a jet engine, it's not an airplane, but it's the part that makes those things go. That's what Kentucky is good at making. What's also amazing is that they're standing in front of a product there. If you'll see, the name Mazak. That's also a Kentucky company. Mazak made this product in Kentucky that's used to make the product that we're exporting around the world. We make products in Kentucky that others are also jealous of. We make automobiles and electric and industrial machinery. We make plastics and chemicals and composites and much, much more. Kentucky has an industrial manufacturing base that is unrivaled by most of our competition. You might be good at aerospace if your state has advanced materials. What do I mean by advanced materials? Well, when you send things into outer space, you can't just make it out of common, ordinary products. When Ben Malfress and the team here at Moorhead State University put together a satellite, it's got some cutting edge technology and advanced materials that help it survive in orbit. When you think about a product having to go into orbit, it better have super capabilities. Well, we're lucky in the fact that here in Kentucky, we are creating those super products that can go into products like aerospace and automobile industries. Those advanced materials include aluminum and glass. How many people in here have an iPhone? Do you realize the glass for that iPhone is made here in Kentucky? Do you realize that the plastics that we make here in Kentucky can do some of the most technological advanced uh, manufacturing processes and it's all made right here in Kentucky. We also make chemicals and composites. All of these things are, are really good in making things for the aerospace industry. You might be good at aerospace if your state has low energy costs. As I got introduced, you heard that I was from Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. When we talk about Touchstone Energy, why would we be interested in aerospace? Because we're providing the power to these manufacturing facilities that build these products. And why are those manufacturing facilities coming to Kentucky? One of the biggest reasons is low power costs. In Kentucky, we are the sixth lowest for power uh, costs associated in manufacturing. 
that gives us a great advantage. We are 20% lower than the national average. When you start layering together our logistics, along with our advanced manufacturing and advanced materials, you start understanding Kentucky becomes a powerhouse of aerospace because of all of these attributes. You might be good at aerospace if your state has an advanced workforce. We do. Look at some of the aerospace companies. I don't have them all listed here, but we have people like GE Aviation in Madisonville, Kentucky. We have Belcan and Bon Aero and Messier Bugatti, to, to name a few. You can look at any number of these, and a lot of these companies are actually here today at the IdeaFest Aerospace Day. Look them up. Find out what they're making. Find out the parts that are being consumed by the world that are originating from Kentucky. We also have to develop that future workforce for those companies, and that's why it's so important to have Kentucky fame and Greg Higdon with the Association for uh, Manufacturers here in the room. CAM is one of the leaders in pushing together the groups that provide education for that future workforce in aerospace. When we look at Greg Higdon, he's, he works with uh, Kentucky Project Lead the Way and the Air and Space Academy and Space Trek, but also Moorhead State University in developing that future workforce. These uh, individuals will be part of a group later today to talk about those future workforce development efforts and to show how our manufacturing community are showing manufacturers in other states and other countries that we're doing it well here. We're developing our future workforce so they may want to come to Kentucky to explore opportunities. When we're out talking in economic development circles around the world, we talk about Kentucky's aerospace. This is an ad that we've placed for the Kentucky Touchstone Energy Cooperatives that's leveraging our aerospace industry here in Kentucky. This is also the governor telling the world that we are an aerospace state. He's holding the same satellite and he's taking this story and this message around the world so that we can leverage what we're already doing here in Kentucky, but take it to that next level. So, as the governor goes around the world, he gets opportunities to sing about the great things that are happening in Kentucky. But one of the things he's singing about is aerospace. This picture is taken from the trade mission that went to the United Kingdom last year. The person on his left is the U.S. ambassador to the, uh, to the United Kingdom, Matthew Barzin. He and the governor are singing along in, UK, in the U.K. talking about Kentucky's aerospace. We've got to have more people understanding how important this industry is to Kentucky and our well-being and also our future. We need you all singing together and talking about the opportunities that exist for that industry here. <clears throat> to steal an ad campaign that Kentucky for Kentucky is doing, I think we need to take something like this. We need to talk about Kentucky and how aerospace is in our future. We need to say Kentucky kicks aerospace. Might be a little different than what our friends at Kentucky for Kentucky say, but I think we can leverage that. And we'll throw the mustache on there too to make sure everybody remembers this presentation about how we're tying things together for the aerospace industry in Kentucky. I found this picture at uh, Northern Elementary in Georgetown uh, the other day, and it made me think that we've got to make sure we're telling our young students in schools of the opportunities that we have in aerospace industry here in Kentucky through Project Lead the Way and some of our other programs, we need to make sure that they see the bright future that is before them in the Commonwealth in aerospace. We need to identify that mustache for these kids. We need everybody out there, and when we do it well together, we start winning awards like the governor won at the Governor's Cup for 2014. But we need everybody to put on the mustache and talk about aerospace. When we think about our future, we've got to start talking to our youth. And more than anything, we got to make sure that they understand the future is bright and so is the future of our aerospace industry in Kentucky. I want to thank you for uh, letting me be a part of today's festivities. I apologize that I was not able to be there in person, but I'm out and uh, uh, trying to recruit additional aerospace industries for Kentucky. And wish me luck and hopefully we'll bring home a winner today. Thank you and have a great Idea Fest Aerospace Day. Thank you.